Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. Today we're going to discuss the all-elusive problem of Leechy's anti-aliasing settings. I get asked this question so many times, I feel like that this must be the most asked question in my field right now. Uh, so many people ask for it. It's a very popular search term. It's out there a lot. People are trying to figure out the best way to alias their prints. And honestly, it does make sense because if you think about it, when you make a part, whether it's something big, like like a component of a model like that, you know, a leg or something like this. Uh, anything that has curves are going to catch layer lines, especially depending on how you orient them. This is why I talk about orientation a lot too, because orienting this leg, you definitely want to make sure that you don't um, have the curves uh, you know, coming out like domes, because that's going to create problems there. So try to avoid that. And again, even if you're printing stuff like this guy, really small stuff, you still want to concern yourself with what your aliasing settings are. And it's, it's important to realize what you need to set them to. So, I mean, depending on the resin, you know, like this is a different quality resin than this, for example. Uh, you can tell just by a little bit by the color shade. Uh, it will determine how the aliasing settings are going to work, how well they're going to turn out, and um, how much you're going to get out of it also depends on your printer. Uh, so the reason I say that is because I'm going to actually use one of the lower resolution printers as the examples um, that I'm going to show for the show part of this tomorrow. Um, so today is going to be the tell where I show you um, the different settings that we're going to use. And then tomorrow I'm going to demonstrate what those prints actually came out like. And you guys can see this. So we're going to do the technical side of it today. And then tomorrow we'll do the show part where I will actually show you all the prints, clean them up, and um, give you guys an idea of, you know, the different type of settings and how that will affect your print. Now, again, if you have an 8K printer or, um, you know, a higher resolution printer than the one I'm showing in this particular technical example, you are going to have... Uh, some different options on some of your aliasing settings, but those aren't the settings we're using because I've actually stayed away from certain settings in Lychee to prevent myself from having issues with aliasing. Um, so for me, I found settings that worked. They work really well every time. I get really good results. The layer lines are very, very minimal, barely noticeable. And um, as long as you're aware of that dome issue, and uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean when I, these prints I have purposely purposely oriented in such a way that it's actually going to make those domes be more of an apparent issue. And I hope it actually does because I want to make an example of that with aliasing and how the different settings can actually help you with that problem. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the rest of the technical example and then uh, we'll finish up tomorrow. Like I said, so this is part one of the aliasing episode and uh, I apologize, we're going to cut it in half because I have the prints running right now, which I'm going to show you guys what the settings that we're using. All right, so let's get into it. All right, and as I said, let's get right into it. Um, this is the objects we want to print. And I, like I said, I specifically chose these because they have domes. And I know I just talked about how you should avoid this, but I'm doing this on purpose, right? Leave me alone. I'm trying to make an example here. So essentially, these domes have been intentionally placed upwards uh, like this, or sorry, downwards toward the um, FEP, because I want that to create a dome point there that is potentially going to cause problems for me. Um, so I want to see how hard these layer lines are going to come out here, and I want to see how hard this affects them. Um, anyway, let's get into the actual settings. So for those of you that are new to Leachy Slicer, or those of you who are new to 3D printing, everybody has different settings for their actual 3D printing um, set up like all the different slicers use a slightly different way to configure this. Chichu box is different. The Tango is different than any cubic uh, photon workshop is different than Leachy Slicer. They all uh, name it something else or call it something else. Or uh, I mean, any cubic just uses a numbering system, which I guess some people have actually said is really just as confusing. Although they tell you every printer they make, you should only set aliasing to one. I'm not really sure why they even have any other number other than one. Because every printer that you use, you should just set it to one. Simple enough. Set it to one. I mean, hey, no. 
Anyway, I used to use setting uh, referred to in the aliasing as sharper details. But anyway, we'll get to that in just a sec. So when you're going into your aliasing, what you need to do is you need to go from your layout to your prepare to your export tab. And what you're going to see here is your printer, your resin, and then underneath it is going to be aliasing. And you can, of course, you can turn this off. You just say, ah, I don't want to deal with it. It's too confusing. Forget aliasing. I don't need that. Well, like I pointed out in the beginning of this video, depending on the object you're printing, you may not need it. You may not care. It could be like a piece of chunky terrain or something or a, a big hockey puck sized disc base that you're just going to print out. You don't really care if it's alias that well because it's terrain. Who cares? But if it's a character or figure, like a face, like I was showing in the beginning, some of those parts that I was demonstrating, that is where your aliasing is going to come in. Because you really don't want to have to sand someone's cheek or spend hours sanding body parts until they get super smooth from all the layer lines. And resin does still produce layer lines, regardless of how smooth the end result actually can be. That usually comes with a bit of finishing and hard work. So that being said, leaving it off means that it's simply left to the printer's own devices. It's going to try and do its best to simply follow the pixel line and create the object based on the slicing. And I've actually tried printing this way as well. It does have its mixed bag of results. Again, depending on the object and the shape, you may get decent results. And with resin, it's not going to be horrible, but you will spend some time sanding any objects that are curved or domed like these bullet bills. Um, the next form of aliasing that I used to use is sharpen. And again, this has three settings in Lychee, four if you have a slightly higher resolution, which goes from two, four, eight, and up to 16 if you're using a printer like, let's say, the Elegoo Saturn II, uh, that goes all the way up to 16. You can raise the gray offset from 20, sorry, 0% all the way up to 100. Uh, I don't recommend doing that. I'm pretty sure that's going to cause some blurs. 20% is not enough if you ever use this setting. Always bring it up to about 50% and make sure to turn the high definition aliasing on. This simply makes it so the slices are a little bit higher resolution uh, than if you were to turn it off. And it does warn you that you need a computer with a decent performance. I'm going to say I was doing slicing with a very old computer up until recently and uh, it, it was doing just fine, even turning this on. So I don't think you need a powerhouse machine, but you do definitely need something with a decent graphics card that can handle um, rendering out a couple thousand images um, that are a little bit higher resolution. So this is sharpened details. Now, the next one is contrast blur. And that one I don't use much. Although it is extremely similar to the one that I do tend to use, it, I don't use it. And again, I've asked, uh, I have tested it before. In fact, we did a video a few months back where I printed three Supermen and we actually just compared contrast to sharpened details to um, no way. I, well, actually, no, there might have been four Supermen, but regardless, we did print a couple examples of them. We showed that and um, I've done some more tests using contrast blur. For whatever reason, it does not get the same results that smooth surfaces does. And so I tend to stick with smooth surfaces as far as my aliasing settings go. And that's the one we're going to get to next. So smooth surfaces, much like contrast blur, uses the exact same tools. You have your radius, which can go from 1 to 20 pixels. And then you have your gray offset, which can go from 0 to, again, 100%. Also, this can still use the high definition aliasing, which I always will turn on because I feel like it just gets me better results anyway. The gray offset, let's reduce down to about 30 and then we'll bring the pixels down to about two. This is where you'd want to be with a 4K printer. This is about the settings that you'd need for a 4K printer to get decent prints with aliasing. Now, depending on the resin you're using, this may not work at all. If you're using a very standard resin that has a very um, low fluidity, you might run into issues where this isn't actually going to help. You need a decent resin. It needs to be I would say not a standard resin. If you're going to use resins that are standard, I would say at least get yourself standard plus. Try to go ahead and upgrade a little bit from the standard materials. They don't usually work as well. They're brittle. They break easier. And honestly, you'll have more failures with it. So take my advice and upgrade your resin first. I actually did an episode a while back called It's Not You, It's Your Resin. And we talked all about the different types of resin materials and how that can actually really affect failure ratios as well. So keep that in mind. 
Now, this is my setting right here that I use for 4K printers. Now, if you're going up to an 8K printer, or let's say just for you know testing purposes, you can bump this up to four pixels and then take this up to 50 or even 70%. And that will actually give you a really good result as far as smoothing goes on the outside, especially of something curved like this dome. And if you can't avoid pointing the domes towards the build plate and stuff like that, honestly, it just makes sense for you to try to make sure that they come out as good as possible. And in the case of this, I am trying to toy with it to see if I can get some results that are as good as possible. Um, now, if you're using a uh, DLP, like let's say you're using the Ultra, which this won't fit on the plate, uh, you will probably want to go with a uh, six pixel radius, and I'm going to suggest sticking with that 50%. This gets me pretty good results on the DLP, whether it's the Ultra or the D2 uh, that we're using. And I have also used sharpened details on it, and it does get a decent result. It's not as good as smooth surfaces. I still find the smooth sur surfaces actually gets me the best results as far as alien aliasing. So I usually go with that as my default for that reason. Um, Let's go ahead and switch that back. But yeah, so there are, again, there's the settings I would recommend for 4K, 2 and 30%. Here's the settings I'm going to recommend for 8K and higher. If you're using like 7K, I suppose you can adjust it a little bit. Oops, sorry, no, I'm sorry. This this is for your, this is your 8K settings, 4 and 50, not 40%. Um, you can adjust if you wanted to. You can bring it down three and let's say you know i guess you could leave it at 50 but you could adjust this a little bit you could lower the uh threshold just a little and then um if you're using dlp like i said you want to pump this up a little bit and then you want to bring the gray gray offset up to 50 or even as high as 70 percent in some cases that will help you achieve a better aliasing because it for whatever reason, the DLP printers, it's, I don't know if they're stubborn. The aliasing doesn't seem to take much of an effect until you really um, push it to, to put it in there. So that is uh, something you have to look at if you're using DLP printers for your printing. Um, anyway, that's uh, pretty much all the technical aspect of this. This is the different settings. Again, the, the settings that I'm most commonly using are going to be your smooth, two pixel and 30% with high definition turned on. And again, we're going to demonstrate tomorrow when I show you the prints, you're going to see off as one example. We're going to show smooth surfaces two and 30 with on. Then we're going to show two and 30 with this turned off to show you there is a little bit of a difference between the quality there. And then we're going to go ahead and show you the four and the 50% with this turned back on to give you an example of a higher quality aliasing to show you the difference between the two. So hopefully that sheds some light on the uh, show part. Now that I'm done with the tell part, y'all can go ahead and get a good night's sleep. And tomorrow we'll come back with another episode and I will show you what we came off with the printers. And you all can judge for yourselves which type of aliasing will work best for you. And uh, I hope this helped. So thanks so much for watching, guys. See y'all soon.